Hi guys, so today we are starting on our next learning target, which is arithmetic and geometric sequences. By the end of this learning target, you should be able to write arithmetic and geometric sequences recursively as well as explicitly and know the difference between them. And you should be able to relate them to its respective function, okay, where arithmetic sequences are linear and geometric sequences are exponential. Okay? So today is just an introduction to what a sequence is okay, and its different parts. Okay? So here we have some definitions. A sequence, all it is, is really a list of numbers, okay? All right, so we have a couple sequences here. All you, it is, is it's a list of numbers, okay? A sequence notation, okay, uh, something you should know is sequences are typically noted by capital letters, right? So like this sequence here is called sequence A with the capital A. This sequence here is sequence B noted with a capital B, okay? We have two types of sequences. One is an infinite sequence. Okay, so infinite means it goes on forever. Okay, and you can see that here, right? So the sequence A consists of 3, 6, 9, 12, and so on and so forth, shown by these three dots. Okay, versus a finite sequence. Okay, a finite sequence has an end, right? So here, sequence B consists of negative 5 negative 50, negative 500, negative 5,000, okay? It doesn't go on forever. It only has these four terms, okay? So you're going to hear me using a lot of these uh, definitions and vocab words a lot, okay? So it's important that you understand what they mean, okay? So first is index. It denotes the position in line it is, the position it is when you list out the sequence, okay? The terms are the actual values, okay? Um, and this is how we write it. So the notation is A sub N, okay? So again, it's read as A sub N, okay? Is the nth term in sequence A, okay? So what this means, example here, we have B sub 2 equals negative 50, okay? What it means is the second term of sequence B is negative 50, okay? So let me kind of highlight some of the parts here, right? So the reason why I know it's the second term is because of this uh, subscript, okay? So this tells me it's the second term here, B sub 2, so that's second term, okay? Uh, it also tells me the name of the sequence Okay, the name of this sequence is sequence B, not shown here. Okay, and then I'm told that it's negative 50 right here. Okay. So our notation tells us that it, which number it is uh, when we list out our sequence. Okay. Then, uh, we're going to be writing the different formulas for this. Okay, we have two types of formulas when it comes to sequences. The first one here is the recursive formula. Okay, and a recursive formula is a formula that performs math on the previous values to find the new or next value. Okay, um, all recursive formulas require a starting value. Okay, so that's something to remember. Okay, recursive, okay, it's math on the previous value, okay, so in order to write a recursive formula, we need to know what happened before, okay, and as a result, since we need to know what happened before, we always need a starting value, okay. Um, the other one we have is an explicit formula, okay, explicit formulas uh, let us find the nth term uh, by plugging in that n, uh, whatever position it is, okay. Um, so let's get talking about this, okay? So here, um, I'm asked to consider the sequence. Uh, the sequence is called A, and it consists of these numbers, okay? It consists of 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, okay? I'm asked to find the following, okay? So here, it asks me for A sub 3, okay? Again, read A sub 3. This tells me I want the third term, okay? I want which one comes third, right? Ooh, my bad. 
So if I look, 4, 8, 16, 16 comes third. Okay, so what this tells me is a sub 3 is 16. Okay, because I'm looking for the third term. The third term here is 16. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so here it says a sub 5. So this means that I'm looking for the fifth term. So if I look here at my sequence, A consists of 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. 64 is fifth. So this tells me A sub 5, or the fifth term in sequence A, is 64. So next, let's take a look here. Okay, so it asks us to find n, okay, if a sub n is 128. Okay, so here I want to look at 128. Okay, so in my sequence, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, when I ask for n, it's asking for the index. Okay. It's asking me for the position in line it is. Okay, so in this sequence, 128 is for second, third, fourth, fifth. It's the sixth term. Okay, so n equals six. What this means is 128 is the sixth term in the sequence. Okay. Next one here asks me, same thing, just in different words. It asks me for what is the index. Okay, so this tells me n or the position that I want. Okay, so what is the position for the term with a value of 16? Okay, so let's look. Okay, oh, here's 16. Where is it in line? It is for a second, third. So it tells me the index or n is 3. Right. That's its position in line. Okay. So let's keep going. Okay, so now that we know how to write our terms and stuff like that, um, we're now going to talk about recursive formulas. So again, so here we have a sequence is defined recursively. So what does this mean? It means it's a formula that performs math on a previous value in order to find the next one. Okay? So here, I have a sequence. It's defined recursively as b sub n okay, equals b sub n minus 1 plus 4. And then I'm given, I'm told that b sub 1 is 7. Okay. So here I'm interpreting what does this mean. Okay. So what this means is that each term okay, is the previous term. plus 4. Okay. And I'm also told that the first term in the sequence is 7. Okay. So you might be like, Miss Ng, how did you get all of this information? Okay, let me explain. Okay, so I got each term here is this, right? Each term in the sequence can be described somehow by some type of b sub n, okay? How did I get previous term, okay? So the previous term is right here. This tells me previous term, okay? You might be asking, Miss Ng, how does that tell me previous term, All right? So let's say I have a number, a position, right? So let's call it b sub n, okay? All right, this is its position in line, Okay, so let's say this is the third one, All right? What comes before that, of course, has to be then b sub 2. The one before that has to obviously then be b sub 1, right? What does that mean? That means this is b sub n minus 1, right? 3 minus, that's how I get the 2. This one before that then, oops, I don't have space, would be b sub n minus 2, right? If I wanted to do the next one, b sub 4 or b sub 5, and if I were to write it in, 
other terms, this would be b sub n plus 1. This would be b sub n plus 2, right? So b sub n is any term. When I say b sub n minus 1, it talks about the previous term, okay? And then plus 4 is right here. Right? So each term is the previous term, b sub n minus 1, plus 4. Okay? And then I'm told that the first term in the sequence is 7. Where did I get that? That's right here. Right? b sub 1 means first term. So if b sub 1 equals 7, that tells me the first term is 7. Right? So now what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to find the first five terms of the sequence. Okay, so n is its position line. So the first one, the second one, third, fourth, fifth. Here I wrote the rule, the recursive formula. Okay, and again, what does it mean? It means each term is the previous term, b sub n minus 1, plus 4. Okay, so n equals 1. So my first term is 7. Okay. Then, I want to find the next term. Okay, so according to this rule, it's the previous term plus 4. Okay, so if I want to find out what the second one is, it's going to be the previous one plus 4. Okay, so I'm going to add 4 here. That gives me 11. Okay, so the second term is 11. Okay, so you get to the next term, to so get the third term. Okay, each term is the previous term plus 4. So the previous term is 11. I'm going to plus 4, and that gives me 15, okay? To find the next term, it's the previous one plus 4, okay? So 15 plus 4 gives me 19, plus 4 gives me the fifth term. This is 23, okay? And so what you see, it, it follows this rule. Each term, each of these, is the previous one, the one that came before, plus 4. Okay, so let's flip to the next one. Right. So one of the most famous of all recursively defined sequences is known as what we call the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, um, this is the formula for it. Okay, it's a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. Okay, and then we are given, we're told a sub 1 equals 1, and a sub 2 equals 1 as well, okay? So let's interpret it. What does this mean, okay? So this recursive formula means that each term is the previous two terms added together, I'm also told that the first two terms, okay, the first one and the second one, the first two, the first two terms in this sequence is 1. Okay. So let me highlight where I got all this information. Okay, so first, each term, that's right here, that a sub n, it's each term, whatever term it is. Okay. How did I get the whole previous two terms thing? That is right here. a sub n minus 1 we talked about is the previous term. Okay. a sub n minus 2 then is the one that comes even before that one. Okay. So this tells me this is the previous two terms. Okay. Added together, how did I get that? That's right here. The plus, right? How do they combine? They are added. Okay. And then where did I get the information that the first two terms in this sequence is 1? That is right here. First two terms in this sequence is 1. Okay, So I know that a sub 1, which is the first term, is 1. a sub 2, that's the second term, is also 1. So the first two terms in this sequence is 1. Okay? We're now going to use that to find the following information. Okay. So here's my number of terms, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. Here's my rule. Okay, so here this is n equals 1. So this is asking me for the first term. Okay, well, I already know what the first term is, a sub 1, right, equals 1. So the first term here is 1. 
Okay. N equals 2, this is asking me for what will be the second term. Okay. All right, so 2, so second term. I already know that too. A sub 2 is 1. So second term, 1. Okay. Then let's apply the rule, right? So we just explain the rule in words, right? Each term is the previous two added together. Okay, so in order to get n sub 3 or a sub 3, I need to get first term, second term, add them together. So 1 plus 1, that gives me 2. Okay, then to get the next term, again, how do I get each term? It's the previous two added together. So here, the previous two is right here, 1 and 2. So 1 plus 2 gives me 3. Okay, to so keep going, next term, okay, to find the, each term, previous two added together. So 2 plus 3, that gives me 5. Right, if I were to keep going, 3 plus 5, the next one is 8, so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, so let's do one more example. Okay. This time, we have a sequence here, and it's defined explicitly, so not in terms of previous terms, but you can find each of them separately, is defined by the formula a sub n equals 2n plus 3. Okay. This one is... Super easy when it's explicit formula. All you have to do is take whichever term you want and plug it in. Okay, so if I want the first term, that means n equals 1. All I have to do is plug in 1 for n. Okay. okay. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So my first term in this sequence is 5. Okay. So here, n equals 2. That means I want to find the second term. Super easy. All I have to do is plug it in. Okay, so 2 times 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So my second term here is 7. Okay. Then let's do the next one here. Okay, I want the third term. So n equals 3. So plug in 3 for n. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 here is 9. My third term is 9. Okay. N equals 4. Okay, so plug that in. Okay. Plug in 4 for n. Okay, 2 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. Okay, so my fourth term in this sequence is 11. Then if I wanted to find the fifth term... Two times five is ten. Ten plus three is thirteen. My fifth term is thirteen. What you should recognize, hopefully, right, is to go from term to term here: five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. What happened is I added two each time, and this is a sneak peek for tomorrow, right? So one reason why I'm adding two is because here, two. And sometimes we might even recognize this as slope. Okay, right? So why? How does it change? I'm adding 2. And that is kind of like my slope here with mx plus b, right? Okay. Um, we'll figure that more and talk about that more as we do arithmetic sequences. Okay. So now I'm asked, what is the 21st term? Okay, so I'm going to find a sub 21. All I need to do is that means my nth value is 21. So all I have to do is plug it in. Okay, so 2 times 21 plus 3. All right, so let me just highlight some stuff. We know why. Okay, so here, when it says 21st term, that means n equals 21. So all I have to do is plug in 21. Okay. 2 times 21 is 42. 42 plus 3 is 45. So what this means is that my 21st term, if I were to actually list them all out, the 21st number I would list out is 45. Okay. And that is my answer here. Okay. This one is the opposite, right? We're told what the term is. We are told that some term in this sequence is 203. We want to know what is the index, okay? Or what position is it, right? Is the first one, second one, third one, a hundredth one? Which one is it? Okay, so all we have to do is since we know the rule, a sub n is 2n plus 3, 
We know that a sub n is 2 under 3. All I need to do is replace that a sub n with 203 and solve. So let's solve, right? So we're going to do reverse order of operations, right? So what is happening to n? It is being multiplied by 2 and added, uh, and 3 is being added. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract 3. Okay. This is 200 equals 2n. This is 2 times n. So to get rid of the times 2, I'm going to divide by 2. 200 divided by 2, running out of space, is 100. 2n divided by 2 is 1n, so that means n equals 100. What is the index? The index here is 100. Okay. That's it for today. Have a great rest of the day. Bye, guys.